Well, there is a new leader in the Republican pack in Iowa, folks, as we count down to the caucuses a week from yesterday. Ron Paul maintains a first place position against his rivals in the Hawkeye State ahead of next Tuesday's contest. With all the last minute jockeying for votes, Congressman Paul leads the nominee preference public policy poll with 24%. Mitt Romney is in second at 20%. Newt Gingrich now third at 13. Doug Weed is senior advisor to the presidential candidate, Ron Paul, and he is with me now. Doug, welcome to the program. It's great to have you. Hi. Thanks, Megan. All right, so this has come as good news to you, but now you've got all these folks, and Ron Paul continues to be first in a lot of polls, and I think under the Real Clear uh, Politics average. He's up there as well, but you've got a lot of folks suggesting he could win Iowa. It's not going to go any further than that. And to those folks, you say what? <laughs> well, winning Iowa is a big deal. The last two presidents of the United States, uh, Barack Obama and George W. Bush, won Iowa and lost New Hampshire and went on to win the nomination in the presidency. So if your template works in Iowa, and your advertising, your coalitions, your ground game, your message resonates in Iowa, it's a good example of how it will resonate other places, uh, of course, tweaked for regions. So it's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. But what's the plan to, to parlay a victory or even a you know, second place or maybe third place finish in Iowa? How do you parlay that into success in later states where Congressman Paul may not be polling as well? Uh, the, the same template. The people of Iowa have focused on this race. The people in California that are voting in a national poll of Gallup or Rasmussen aren't focused on who they're actually going to vote for. Uh, last night, we had a very well-dressed businesswoman uh, come to us uh, for our practice caucus practices in Iowa. And uh, w someone pulled her aside and said, no, why are you supporting Ron Paul? She said, he's the purest protest I can make against the corruption in Washington, D.C. Ron Paul's kind of pulled the curtain back on that. There's always been corruption, but the scale of corruption in Washington, D.C. now is so bad, he's the purest vote, uh, always voted against uh, uh, tax increases, unbalanced budget, gave back $100,000 of his own congressional allowance. If you want a pure protest vote, it was Ron Paul. And we think when the people in New Hampshire, as the polls are already beginning to show there, and the people in South Carolina focus uh, and make their decision, uh, we're going to do very well. When and they see our commercials, we're going to do very well. Yeah, you've been, you've been, I mean, I was in Iowa for the debate on December 15th, and I can say you, you guys have certainly peppered the airwaves with ads against Gingrich and Romney and others. I want to ask you about the news today that Gary Johnson, who had been a Republican candidate for president, is now going to run on the Libertarian ticket. That's your guy's thing, Libertarian uh, ideals, although Gary Johnson shares them as well. Ron Paul has not closed the door to a possible third-party ticket run if he doesn't wind up as the GOP nominee. Your thoughts on the announcement from Gary Johnson today? Well, uh, Ron Paul's not an absolutist, and that's the only reason uh, it, it, that he leaves a little bit of the door open. And the last time around, the Republican Party didn't treat him very well. And the fact that he's a contender and a player and is going to win the nomination, it's a moot point. Uh, the poll last night, the PPP poll you referred to, showed a remarkable thing. It showed Ron Paul leading among evangelical Christians in Iowa over Perry, Bachman, and Gingrich. That bodes well for South Carolina. It bodes well for him winning the nomination and the presidency. And the Washington Post poll just three days ago showed him doing better than Gingrich against Barack Obama and a statistical tie with Mitt Romney within the margin of error against Barack Obama. So <laughs> who's talking about third party? We're talking about winning in Iowa and making a run for it, if not winning, in New Hampshire and uh, winning the nomination. You know, one of the issues, obviously, you know that Congressman Paul is most controversial on is his foreign policy stance, and in particular, Israel and Iran, and whether he would allow Iran to get the bomb. He said he doesn't want it, but he doesn't want it because he's worried that the United States will then go to war with Iran, and he doesn't want that, just the same as he didn't want the Iraq war. He thinks we're too, uh, too prone to, to attacking other countries and to, you know, in, in, in ter injecting ourselves militarily. Uh, Newt Gingrich came out and said, given that kind of attitude and, and policy stance, it would be a tough choice for Americans if the choice came down to Barack Obama versus Ron Paul. And Ron Paul is to the left of Barack Obama on certain issues, including foreign policy with respect to Iran. To those voters, I, I, or to I, Newt Gingrich, what do you say? Sir? Yeah, 
Yeah, I totally disagree with the, 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 that idea that he's to the left or the right. He's pro-Constitution. He's in favor of taking the idea of war. He's not against war. Uh, he was the only public figure in 1981 to stand up and defend Israel's right to defend herself and take out those Iraqi nuclear facilities. He's not against war. He's in favor of going to the U.S. Congress, as the Constitution says, debating it, committing to war, getting in, winning it, and then getting out. He's against these endless wars that just uh, happen uh, uh, at a whim because somebody uh, believes that someone's a threat to the United States. If there is serious threat to the United States and or our allies, uh, then let's take it to Congress, let's discuss it, let's commit, and let's get in and win it and get out. Doug, last question for you, and uh, forgive me if this is uh, impolitic, but Ron Paul, 76 year, years old, is, is there a concern that his age might be an issue for him in going after this nomination? <laughs> You know, the, the real problem is getting right on the issues, not having the right age. Barack Obama's got the right age, but he is totally wrong on the issues. And uh, uh, the people who are voting for us in Iowa and who support us in Iowa are people who've lost the value of their homes. They've lost the value of their IRAs. They're students who are paying 8% interest on a student loan, while billionaires are getting 0% interest-free loans to stimulate the economy. And they're fed up with that corruption. And his message resonates regardless of his age. Uh, the hard part is getting right on the issues, and Ron Paul's been able to do that this cycle. Well, I know you're much more uh, focused right now on that number 24% that puts him in, in first place uh, in, the, in the latest PPP Iowa poll, 24% over Romney's 20 than you are on uh, the number 76. Doug, all the best. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Megan. All right, see you next week.